So hello and welcome to this special battle report. This is the Great Game Refort, the Battle of Waterloo at Glasgow University. It's now 20 to 6 on Friday the 14th and we're just setting up our troops. We are the 2nd Corps, 6th Division. Uh, so I've got the 1st and... Uh, sorry, the 1st Leger and the 1st Line here. And my colleague, my always companion colleague, General Andy, over here has the second line and second light. So Andy, you're not in the picture. So that was a, that was a very nice smile. Thank you. I don't have to smile. So. <laughs> He's also bringing the howitzers. That's going to be super important because on the other side of the table is ba -ba -bam, Hugo. Mar. This is going to be our objective, maybe, uh, for the battle. So you can see we've got plenty of guards in and around Hugo. Mar. So, well, that's all. It's two tiny units of guards. I reckon that we've got that. Oh, no, hang on, hang on. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of guards over there. There's also Maitland's Brigade down here as well for some more guard. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take a bunch of pictures and I'm going to put them up, probably with no commentary, uh, although I might add one later as we're going. But, uh, yeah, so it's Friday night. We're setting up for tomorrow. And I will see you guys in a bit. This is from the gallery that overlooks the hall. I thought I'd do a video from up here just to show you everything that's going on. Unfortunately, I can't really get the whole hall in one picture because of where the lift's positioned. But if you look on the table of your left, that's the front French line. There's a table behind that. And that's got all the reserves and the Imperial Guard and things like that on. So this table here is the French front line. The table opposite it is obviously the British front line. You can see Hugomon in the distance there, just uh, past that huddle of guys. And then the table on the right is the British reserves. Down here, we've got a, re a, light, a red light, which is uh, ruining my camera shot. Uh, we've also got the Prussians, and there's a smaller table of Prussians just behind that red light. You're not going to be able to see it, unfortunately. So that's the sort of the bird's eye view of the battlefield. What's going to happen is obviously we're going to move to the edge of the table and then we're going to sort of teleport onto the next table for free. So it's just one continuous movement. Up here on the balcony, we've got Warlord Games, we've got Flags of War, we've got a few uh, manufacturers. We've also got some reenactors up here as well. So hopefully I'm going to get some photographs or possibly some interviews with them later. We've also got the Waterloo Uncovered, which is the archaeological project supporting uh, ex-service personnel. And there's a, a stand for them as well, so I'll probably go and chat to them later on as well. So we're still waiting to get underway, but um, I thought I'd give you a view of the whole battlefield. And yeah, so I'm looking forward to getting started and crushing the, uh, the defenders of Hugomont. The French turn two. I didn't do a video at the end of the first turn because not a great deal happened to be fair. We've moved forward towards Hugomon, the table here. So we've got uh, a lot of the brigade in the woods here. Uh, I think those Nassau guys are going to need a bit of support fairly soon. The, re the first line are still in reserve here, so there's still plenty of troops to uh, support Hugomon. As you can see by the excellently modelled fire, uh, Hugomon is burning. We actually set fire to it on both turns with the French howitzers. So that was pretty spicy, if I'm honest. So I'm going to just uh, cut the video here, and I'm going to go down the other end and find out what's going on. Gardens of Hugomont, the French First Leger, smashed the Nassau troops out of the way, and are in turn countercharged by a unit of guard. Uh, the French declined to overrun. They manned the wall instead. So the guard countercharged, and we're going to be fighting combat shortly. I'm not entirely certain that the countercharge was a great idea, but we'll see how it goes. Combat with the Coldstream guards there. They uh, charged in and took two hits on closing fire for the light infantry. They were super lucky for me. They inflicted the casualty in combat. They got a casualty inflicted back. They lost the combat by one due to supports, but they rolled a mighty 10 for their morale save and carried on fighting. So that's pretty much the end of British turn three. Doesn't look like anyone else is actually doing anything. I think we're the only people actually playing the game today. But uh, <laughs> I'll give you more reports from further on down the line as stuff actually happens. 
British counter-attack was very unsuccessful. The French first lights managing to force them back and also breaking, I think, a unit of KGL or perhaps a second unit of guard uh, who were supporting them. They rolled a four for their um, morale save. Uh, sorry, their morale check and fled the field as well. The Nassau have been pushed back from the wall, but they're still holding it with a couple of exposed battalions of guard there. I'm not sure what's going to happen with them because they're not facing my brigade, they're facing a different regiment. Over here we've got the French pushing in on the actual ridge, or just to the east of the, uh, the ridge. You have to excuse me, I am being called... I was called away, I went to see my emperor, and he awarded me Paul Le Merit, a nice golden eagle pin badge there, and that was for clearing the guard out of Hugomon there. So, I captured the standard, great stuff, I'm going to wear this with pride, I'm the only one who's got one at the moment. So uh, I'm back to commanding my corps. The British seem to be moving up again. Uh, I think that's the King's Regiment. So those of you who've seen the channel know that that's my old regiment. So the boys are coming. It's going to feel bad when I can't charge them, but it's got to be done. So that's it, the British turn four. It looks like we're engaged further along the line now as well. It's looking very good. So let's see how we go. The, the action's really hopping up here. I have a, I really think this could be over by the end of today. But let's see what happens. Hugon, all I should mention, is still on fire. It's failed two turns to put the fire out. So they'd better start dredging that well and getting some water up, or they're going to be in a lot of trouble next turn. Cavalry, who were once over there, are now moving over here to take on the Prussians. I'm not sure if the, uh, the British uh, have infiltrated the Guard Cavalry and the Grand Old Duke of York's in charge because they are not going to see combat in this entire game if they carry on down here. And that's a really important tactical lesson. Once you've made a decision, it's really important that you stick to it because otherwise you end up not doing anything with that unit. So that's what's going to happen with that Guard Cavalry. I'm a little bit annoyed because we could do with the support on our side. But I just wanted to put that as a video just to say when you've made a decision, you need to stick with it. That's an important maxim in all war games, especially Napoleonic games. So here we are in Allied Turn 4. Right, so it's a live combat hits. going on. So the Nassau right, charged the French infantry, causing so three more casualties. Than you, so they won the combat. But the Nassau um, have lost. So basically, a great test at Five. minus two. Minus two. So, so two guys. Minus he's two. going to take his role there. Oh, it's a three, they evaporate. So they're gone. That's the end of the Nassau. I think that's going to also mean that that's a broken Nassau brigade. I think the other regiments going to have to fall back in their turn, but we'll worry about that later. So the KGL that was supporting them will have to take a test as well. So let's see how that one goes. There's no modifiers to this though, of course. So let's hope he rolls poorly for them as well. Here he comes. David, the KGL commander, gets his dice poised, ready to go. He leans in, he rolls the dice, he rolls a five. They, oh, he rolls a ten, they absolutely love it, no problems. And they, they stand where they are. 12.40 on day one, and Huamon has fallen. The uh, howitzers set fire to the building twice with a crazy roll of six. Um, and the intensity of the fire proved too much, forcing the guards unit in there to disperse. There's still one left in the garden here. We're just checking to see if they're a broken brigade. For lunch, I think the British had some brain food, some uh, oily fish maybe, and they've decided that throwing their battalions in one at a time against the mighty French horde wasn't necessarily such a great idea. So they've started falling back here. We've had a conflab with our divisional commander, and despite orders from the top to thin our ranks, our divisional commander has gone with his brigadiers, with her brigadiers, sorry, and uh, suggested that we crack on, as we were doing before. To the left of Hugomont, the French have pulled back a little, but they've also burst through on the other side as well, destroying a battalion of uh, British infantry. And the attack's still in the balance here. I think it's going to be a tight one. The Guard Cavalry have moved up on our flank, so let's see how it goes in the next. Sneaky Prussians are coming on to the French uh, eastern flank. Uh, sorry, yeah, 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 their right flank. So they're actually coming up behind the attack that's going on here. It looks like they're going to be um, catching up with some French cavalry who turn around to uh, face the threat. So we've only got lancers here and a bit of artillery to try and stop them. I'm sure the lancer commander is going to try and charge and make them form square. That will, of course, slow them down and stop them moving. At this point, the lancer's role isn't to actually kill anyone. 
it's just to stop them moving. But the Prussians coming in, in numbers, so that's a bit of a problem for the rest of our army. The divisional commanders and the corps commanders seem to have lost their nerve quite a bit and are moving a huge amount of reserves over to counter the Prussians. I think a strong thrust forward would have been the way to go, but never mind, so we'll see how it goes in the next turn. Uh, bogged down a lot to the right of Hugomont. The um, French 6th uh, Division trading fire with the 95th Rifles. The superior protection of the wall means that it's kind of 50-50 against the better shooting skills of the French. Sorry, of the rifle. On the other side of Hugomont, though, the French are continuing to push through, destroying two battalions of Germans and forcing another one to retreat in that last turn. So it's going very well for the French on this side. We've got a huge Hanoverian brigade over there. I'm hoping that whoever's in charge of those lancers makes all those guys into nice squares. But let's see how that goes. So the expected French counter-attack has gone in. It was moderately successful. The, uh, they won all the combats that they were involved in except one. Uh, didn't break any enemy units, but that's okay, because it means that they are in combat for the Allied players' turn. So it means that they can't be shot at. So that's not necessarily the worst result in the world. The British are now bringing up their reserves. They're being a lot less aggressive than they were before, though. Uh, I think they're concerned about the French ability to counter-attack. I don't think they saw that one coming, but uh, we'll see how it goes in the future. In the uh, garden here, the KGL finally broke, the uh, unit that was there, so the fighters have fell back, so next turn I'll be able to move forward. I did a bit of voodoo magic, I measured from that unit to the guns, and declared to the guy next to me, oh yeah, that's an easy charge, it's only two moves, which instantly made my opponents form a corridor of death with the guard, which means they've been effectively taken out of the game for now, so I'm quite happy. With that. I was never intending on charging the guns. It was a bit of gamesmanship by me, but uh, I'm quite pleased with that, even if I say so myself. So, the battle, the grind fest continues here, and we'll see how we go. Success for the French there. Well, the fight in the garden has ground down to a bit of a halt. The uh, French image there is shaken, as are the KGL. Uh, we've broken through here on the right in the garden, though. We've pushed through to the guards. The rifles are losing units left, right, and centre. The British here, though, they've really pushed forward through the orchard, so I'm not really sure how that's going to end up. It's a very, uh, it, it's a very topsy turvy battle. But uh, yeah, no, we'll see how it goes from here. On the left of Hugomont, we are being pushed. Right back, we're getting a real kick in there. But uh, we'll see how that one goes. I'm hoping that a, a swift French counter attack can maybe do some damage on the British. So. No matter what happens in the rest of the game, the enforcer, Lieutenant Lagrosse himself, have defeated a unit of British Guard. Forcing them back. He is shaken in the process, but that's okay. We can reform and go again later. Well, welcome to the start of the second day. We are looking just to the left of Hugomont. Down here, we've got a huge cavalry brigade down there. I'm sure they're going to be advancing on the Hanoverians. There's some British. No, no, no. There's not British. They are Hanoverians. Coming down here, we've got two badly more French. <laughs> We've got two badly more French divisions here. We've got a much less molested two French divisions here. I'm sure they're going to uh, be doing something shortly. And then over there in the orchard, we've got some Brunswickers and some more guard. Yeah, there's all the guard. Uh, not for them, some more French infantry. We're going a bit further down the line, so we're going towards the centre now, more towards La Haye Saint. So, what are you doing? Like we've got a breakthrough on the French right. There's um, French streaming forward, and we'll be on the uh, the end table soon. So that's the goal. Uh, I think Brussels is just around about where that radiator is on the wall, I reckon. So uh, over here on the right, doing much better than we are on the left, which uh, <laughs> quite surprised me. I'm a little bit disappointed. I thought we were doing the best, but no, it's really good that the army is doing exceptionally well over here. I am mega impressed. So, like I re reported on yesterday, the Guard Cavalry 
have galloped here and they've galloped there and they've done absolutely nothing for the entire game. Like I said earlier on in this video, but it was yesterday for me, uh, this is one of the real dangers of Black Powder. If you just change your mind halfway through, you end up doing absolutely nothing. So you've got an absolutely massive strike force here and they're just sat there doing absolutely nothing. It's really frustrating for French commanders because you definitely need reinforcements, but here we can only do what we can do. It was finally decided that we'd done enough shitty shallying last turn. The first Leger stormed through the garden into the rifles there. The rifles uh, fired their closing fire. They hit twice and both the same. Neither was a disorder. So. Supported by the 100th EME. <laughs> but most importantly, the 100th EME, they're going to be the ones who are going to break the line. But um, yeah, no, a great uh, roll for the Leger. I was a little bit lucky. I got exactly what I needed, three moves. But uh, yeah, hopefully they can do some nastiness to those rifles. Let's see how it goes. Well, a successful combat saw the death of a battalion of rifles. Two support units passed their tests, unfortunately. But it's still a good start. Uh, the French then used their uh, victory move to hop back behind the hedge to give them some cover from any British fire that's coming in. Or maybe even a KGL counter charge. We'll see how that goes. So in that turn, I tried to charge the KGL. This front battalion here, they were disordered. So I tried to move the units behind their round and in. But as it was, I only got one move after my CNC reroll. So we're just sort of forming up to charge next turn. We're still behind the hedge, so we've still got some cover. And we'll see how it goes next turn. Over on our right, near the Hay Saints, the French have actually broken through, and we're on the final British table. So hopefully, it's uh, gonna go well there. To the left of Humont, the French have pulled back. They've had left a couple of units out to stop a uh, pursuit from the Allies, but uh, it's looking a little bit retreaty on this left-hand side, uh, but a lot more advancing here on the right. So this is the French, the extent of the French event so far. We're on the final British table. The French moving in. It looks like they're up against some, um, I want to say Dutch. Yep. Uh, with some Hanoverians. Yep. So it's looking super solid over here. Well done, guys. So carrying the uh, carrying the Eagles all the way to Brussels by the look of it. So away from Finia. Okay. See how deep the formations are across that. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of ground to cover the next to nothing. Yeah, yeah. A lot of French. So and the what? No, not much allies. No. So, but even so, you know, you you can only beat what you're up against. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we've got the Prussians over there on the right hand flank, moving down the road. Far too slowly. Again? Far too slowly. Far, well, no, no, no. So, if you want to go that way, I don't think anyone will mind. So, that Union Brigade is super scary though. Very good, very good. We can go for the French, uh, the French over here. No, not where we are, it's not. So it's glad it's going well somewhere. Two turns after lunch, and it's looking very bad for the French in and around Hugomont. I thought we were going to be doing pretty well. We could break through. But the you know I thought were chasseurs turned out to be Dutch Belgian light dragoons. So uh, they're going to start rolling up our troops in the uh, the garden now. I think we're going to have to start maybe pulling back. It's, uh, it was a valiant effort, but I don't think we're going to be able to break through anymore. So we'll have to see how that goes. But uh, it's about trying to keep my clan alive at this point, I think. Uh, away from the marauding cavalry and 95th rifles that are over there. I've just come over to the La Hay Saint portion of the battlefield. And we can see what I've been talking about in the videos already today. The Imperial Guard attack is coming quite heavy. But the British cavalry have forced them into square, which obviously stops the attack going forward. So this is the the best way of using cavalry in Black Powder. It's something that the French cavalry commanders haven't really got to grips with this weekend. The cavalry are there to pin the infantry in place, stop attacks going in. And that's what the Allied cavalry have done brilliantly. I don't know who's in charge of that regiment there, but they've done a great job. And it's this is where my frustration for the, the very poor handling of the French cavalry comes in. So one unit of British cavalry have stopped the entire guard attack. That's Dutch and British. So sorry. So let, let's be honest, the British have uh, stopped. <laughs> I stopped the guard, and, and that's how to use cavalry and black powder. I, I, I can't really say more than that, to be honest. Final trawl across the battlefield. 
So we're looking from the French left here. So we've got uh, the heavy cavalry being pushed back by the Dutch infantry. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, okay. Moving uh, further to the French right, we've got, well, further from the French left, I guess, we've got Hugomont and the, uh, the brave second division who's advancing forward but uh, was eventually beaten back by just too many guard units. So now we're going to the centre here, so or further towards the centre. Again, that's a huge British breakthrough there. They're actually gone onto the other table as well. So it's it's not good for the French here. Going further down to the Hay Saints, we've got a massive thrust by the French, but it's being held back by the British. You can see at least four units of Union Brigade cavalry there. I'm going to zoom in a little bit. Uh, and they are, uh, in, they've engaged from multiple sides of French infantry. I think they're probably going to roll up that entire heavy column. Well, there's a couple of squares in there, so maybe not. But uh, we'll move on further. So I've moved around to the right of the Hay Saints. There it is. And uh, we can see we're packing away some French. But it looks like they were pushing past the Hay Saint. You're not going to be able to see table four because that's underneath my feet so I can maybe hang it down a little bit yeah, you can see it there and the French did make it onto that table but uh, they couldn't really do much while they were on there it's a bit of a pyrrhic victory I guess then over on table two table two we've got the Prussians there advancing from the west uh, they were met by the middle and young guard and that became a bit of a stalemate they're also on back on table one there as well so that ended up being a bit of a stalemate. Papillot Farm, which is on the extreme French right. I should walk past all these people and get to a, a position I can see. Papillot Farm over here. That changed hands several times during the battle. I think it ended in French hands, looking at it. Those are all French units that you can see down there. Um, so, yep, yeah, no, they managed to break through there as well, but um, not necessarily in the long term. I think those are behind Papi Up Farm, once I'm zooming in on now, I think they're Prussian units. So they were coming up to the rear of the French formations there. So not necessarily looking great for them there either. So that's the, the final positions of the great game. It was declared as an allied victory. I think that's fair enough. I think in, in Waterloo especially, the French couldn't draw. The French needed to win and anything else was a loss really. Uh, so, the Allies won the great game uh, replay. The Prussians coming in early, I think, was a huge part of it. I think the terrible handling of the French cavalry also had a huge impact. And I think the just the sheer numbers of British that were in the centre they could use to reinforce really helped them out as well. But overall, a fantastic game. I want to say thanks to particularly Professor Tony Pollard for his efforts in making it happen. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the video. I've uh, put a couple of these videos up already over the weekend. And uh, I hope you've enjoyed them if you've seen them. And I hope you've enjoyed them in their larger context. But I'll do my thoughts on the game in a separate video. I just wanted to give you a final sit rep of where we were at. And that's it. So thanks for watching. Goodbye.